Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and the Cells as the Basis of Life module. This is video number four. We're going to be looking very quickly at cells and technology. The important thing with this particular area of study is that we need to understand the range of technologies that have been used by biologists to start looking more closely at cell structures and also to get an idea of their function. Now, one of the very important things to remember about all of this is that there's been a very strong relationship between technology and the development of microscopes in particular and the what we might call the cell theory. That is our understanding of cells and the importance that they uh, the important role that they play in biological organisms. So part of what we do when we go through this is to try and keep in mind that relationship between technology and cell theory. Firstly, microscopes. So microscopes are basically any object that, uh, any technology that allows us to take an object and make it appear bigger. So for very, very small things, it's very, our eyes only resolve those images down to a, a reasonably small size. And beyond that, it's just not possible for us to see any sort of detail. So we need something to help us do that. So that could be something as simple as a magnifying glass. Now a magnifying glass allows us to look at an object that's a little bigger than what it was before. Magnifying glass consists of a lens and that lens is shaped in such a way that it allows us to uh, make that image larger. What was realized um, fairly early on was that if you put two of those um, two magnifying glasses together, two lenses together, then the image that was magnified from the first could then be further magnified by the second lens. This idea of multiple lenses or compound um, systems is what allowed us to greatly increase the magnification of the objects that we were looking at. One that was developed by Robert Hooke. Now Hooke's quite famous, he's a very important um, biological person because his name has been linked with the actual naming of cells. He looked at um, cells through a microscope that he developed himself and you can see that his magnification power was around for, uh, 10 to 40 times. So it's not huge, but certainly it's much better than what you can see with your eye. And so this was starting to help us to explore worlds that we were, no, we were previously unable to explore. As our understanding of microscopy and certainly of the technologies associated with uh, microscopes improved, our quality of microscope improved, our magnification increased, and so did our ability to resolve images. Now resolution is basically being able to effectively see two points that are close together as two distinct separate uh, dots in this case. Uh, the closer the dots are together, the harder it can be to resolve. And obviously I can't draw them small enough unless I draw them on top of each other for you to, to not be able to resolve them. But certainly what a microscope can do is it can go drill further down and um, have a look at that sort of detail. And that's what we needed if we were going to study cells. There was a lot of detail inside the cell that we didn't know about. And it was the discovery and the development of, of microscopes that went hand in hand with our understanding of cell theory. So a little, I guess a little brief history. Um, the, as far as our history is concerned, the first um, credited compound microscope went to the Janssens. Um, and that was in the late 1600s. Uh, then we had the development of Hooke's microscope and the fact that he actually published um, a quite comprehensive work which included um, some images of cork cells. And the cork cells um, s appeared to uh, Hooke like little cells in a monastery and that's why he gave them the name cell and of course that name has stuck around for the last 350 odd years. Critically important is that as the microscopes improved so did our knowledge of cells. If you take nothing away from this video other than that 
That's the most critical point. The two things go hand in hand. The better our microscopes, the more we knew about cells, the more we knew about what they looked like, the more we knew about the fact that there were different cells. Even in my own body, there is a range of different types of cells. They look different, they have different structures, and they have different functions. They serve a different purpose. Two important things that I've mentioned on the previous slide are magnification and resolution, and those are the things that needed to happen in order for us to improve the quality of our microscopes. So this is probably something like what you have in the laboratories at school. You can see all of the key pieces in here. The, the thing that's very important to keep in mind when you're looking at microscopes is there will be an objective lens and if, for example, this is a 10 times objective lens, then what that means is that the image um, that's on the stage is going to be 10 times bigger here. So that magnification is going to make it 10 times bigger um, from that first lens. So if you have an eyepiece that is also a 10 times eyepiece, then you're making the 10 times bigger image 10 times bigger again. So therefore, in this case, in the example I've talked about, total magnification would equal 10 times 10 or 100 times. So this is making a very large image for us to have a look at. And it's important when you are looking at cells that you identify and record the magnification that you used. As you can see over on the left here, there are a number of different um, magnifications that we can use, a number of different objective lenses that we can use, and the detail is very different um, as we look through each of those. In the four times objective lens, and of course we don't have the eyepiece, but if we assume that it's a 10 times, then this would be 40 times magnification. And you can see that the nuclei in each of these cells just appears as a tiny dot. It's very difficult to see any detail. You can use a stain that will actually be picked up by um, different chemicals within the cells and therefore it will stain some and not others and um, using something like iodine works quite well for um, staining the nucleus so you can see it. You can see that a little larger on the 10 times objective lens and then when you get to the 40 times you can really see some more detail in that nucleus and this is what we mean when we talk about resolution. We're actually trying to get in as close as we can to see as much detail as we can about these particular cells. Notice also that whilst some of the structures within appear with greater clarity, we also have three-dimensional images. We're not looking at a two-dimensional image and therefore there can be a bit of clouding or shading as you sort of get to the really higher levels of magnification and you're seeing that 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 image can we can sort of focus on different parts of the cell as um, as we um, move the um, focus the fine or the coarse focus it's just brings more things into or out of focus this is a reason why when you're looking through the microscope it's really important that you start on the lowest power possible so uh, a four times would be where I would start with this one that gives you the whole field to look at you can move things around get something that you're interested in into the center of your field and then you can increase the magnification so you can focus directly on that if you start with the biggest magnification then everything that you when you touch the slide everything moves very quickly you lose things you can't find them again it makes it much more difficult so just one of the little techniques that that's important with the microscope thanks for watching